Yes. We always have a problem. I've had this problem for the last three years here in Dearborn. You know how they pass out flyers, but most stuff up. Yeah, they have multiple timetables. I swear, some of them are like 20 minutes apart. Apart. Correct. Especially during the fajr when you want to stop eating. You don't know which one to believe. So, so when it comes to these uh, prayer timetables, let's apply these rulings on them. Let's say you have three timetables. One of them says 6 a.m. is fajr. The second says 6.10. The third one says 6.20. Let's not talk about consequences now. Let's now talk about what's permissible and not permissible. Halal and haram. If now I don't know, because there's three conflicting you know, prayer timetables, I really don't know when Fajr is going to start. 6, 6, 10, 6, 20. I really don't know. In that case, can I eat at 6 a.m. and 6, 10 up until 6, 20? At 6, till 6, 19. Can I eat or drink? It depends on which one you have yakin on. No, no, no. We said you're confused. You don't know. Oh. You have three prayer timetables before you. You don't know which one's the accurate one. You just don't know. You have no way of verifying which one's more accurate. Yeah. You're just confused. Yeah. One says 6 is Fajr. One says 6.10. One says 6.20. If you eat before 6 and you, and you stop, obviously, you know, that's what ihtiyat says and that's what we call the imsak. Obviously, that's the law of precaution, that's good. But if you eat up until 619, are you allowed to eat up until 619? Yes. yes. Based on what law? No, law of istishab, law of continuity. At 619, you don't know if Fajr came. Istishab says at 559, you definitely know it wasn't Fajr. All three prayer timetables are in agreement. So you have previous certainty that it wasn't Fajr. Continue that previous certainty into the current state, which proves that at 6.19, it's still not Fajr. So you can eat. From a halal haram perspective, you're allowed to eat. Now let's look at the consequences of eating. Let's say you did eat up until 6.19. At 6.18, you had your last you know, bite or last drink, last sip of drink. Then you, st you fasted at 6.20. Later on, it was revealed to you that this last prayer timetable is wrong. In fact, Fajr was at 6.10 or let's say it was at 6. In that case, you didn't do anything sinful. Allah won't hold you accountable. There's no kafara that you have to pay. But what do you have to do for all those days that you kept, fa kept eating until 6.19? You have to do the qada. You have to do the qada. Istishab only says from a halal haram perspective, you're off the hook. It's not sinful to eat. You can eat. But if the sahab doesn't say, I'll validate the fast for you if you discover that it was wrong. If the sahab says, I don't have that much authority. What if you don't discover? What? If you don't discover, there's nothing. You're off the hook. We're talking about if you discover that it was wrong. If you never discover, fine. You can always assume it was sahih. We're talking about the scenario in which you actually discover it was wrong. So istishab can only cover you from a halal haram perspective, not from the consequences and what's a valid fast and what's an invalid fast. Istishab says if you develop certainty later, I'm no match for certainty. I won't cover the consequences. That's why it's good to do ihtiyat by the way. Even though it's halal for you to eat up until 619, but don't put yourself in a situation where if one day you discover this was wrong, you're told, hey, you have to f make up five years of fasting. You don't want to put yourself in that situation. So this is the first scenario about the prayer timetable. Second scenario. The second scenario in these prayer timetables, you actually have confidence in one of them. The middle one, the first one, the last one, you're like, I believe in that one. That third one gives me yaqeen. I trust this institution more and what they say generates certainty. Obviously, you're allowed to keep eating until that prayer timetable tells you it's fajr. What if it was discovered that it was wrong? Then you have to make up, right? Do you have to make it up or not? This is a point of debate among scholars. Why? See the hadith that says you're completely off the hook, even no qada, if you discover you were wrong, 
states if you made the effort to figure out Fajr. Now what does that mean? How do you apply it in modern times? A clear example in the past was to go out in the open field and actually try to look for the white line, the brightness that spread horizontally in the horizon. That was the way that you could do it in the past. So the Imam says if you actually went with your own eyes, you try to see the horizon, it was pitch black for you. You didn't see the Fajr. So you, you, you ate and then you discovered you were wrong for whatever reason. There was an object or something, whatever. But you made the effort to verify it yourself. In this case, the Imam says there's no consequence. No qada, no kafara, just continue fasting as if nothing happened. Now taking a prayer timetable that you trust from an institution, do you consider this applicable to the hadith of the Imam that says if you did your own effort and research to figure out Fajr, then you were wrong, there's no consequences or no. This is like relying on your trustworthy friend, which does have a consequence if your friend is wrong. Which one is it? Which category would you consider it to? Imagine right now, you're a jurist, you're trying to figure this out. How would you classify the scenario if you're basing your Fajr on a prayer timetable that gives you confidence and yaqeen that this is the right one? So it's a trustworthy friend, right? And then you so you say it's more like a trustworthy friend that you're trusting them and that's giving you confidence. So you have no kafara. So in that case, if it's like a trustworthy friend, yeah. there's no kafara, there was not a sin to eat up until that time, but you have to do the qadha. No, but this, this people there is more experience than, than, than we are. So in this case, to figure out what time is the Fajr. So I should trust them more. Yeah. That's true. See, we have to technically work with the hadith of Imam al Sadiq. What does the hadith say? The hadith says if you keep eating because you don't know whether Fajr came or not. We have a number of scenarios. One is istishab. If you base it on istishab, istishab says you didn't do a sin, but if it turns out you're wrong, there's definitely qada. Okay, no discussion there. The second scenario, you are basing your decision to eat on a friend or a person who's claiming that fajr has not set yet. Yeah, but that person. Whether okay. Now, it doesn't matter whether that person is more experienced or not. The Imam السلام, in the hadith, he says if you're basing that on someone else, even if that person is adil, even if that person is trustworthy, it turns out they're wrong, you have to do the qadha. In which scenario does Imam al-Sadiq tell us you're off the hook, there's no qadha? If you yourself, you went and you tried to figure out if Fajr was there or not. If I don't know how to figure out what's, when is Fajr. So if you don't know how to figure out, let's say scholars talk about a blind person who at the time had no way of verifying it. All he can do is base it on reports or claims of others. Many scholars say based on ihtiyat, the person has to do the qadha of that day if it turned out to be wrong. Yes, they mention this. Because they're not sure, they make it ihtiyat. Because you could argue that, okay, you know, the person had no way of finding out the fajr, so why should they do the qadha? So it's a precaution. The qadha of the blind person is based on precaution. Now in our modern times we have a scenario that didn't exist in the past. You have what's called a prayer timetable from one of the institutions. So let's say there are three, they're 10, minute apart, they're 10 minutes apart. One of them gives you certainty, you know I trust them, they, do their, they know what they're doing, I'm going to base my decision in determining Fajr on this prayer timetable. You did, it turned out they were wrong. Meaning it was proven to you they were wrong. If it's never proven to you, just continue, no problem. But if it was proven to you, you know what, they miscalculated. What we're trying to find out is under what category does this fall under? Right? Under which category? Is it like basing it on a friend who's trustworthy and he gives you certainty? If it's that the case, you have to do the qadha according to most scholars. But if it's more similar to you doing your research and trying to verify Fajr, there's no qadha. So the, the question that I wanted to ask you, just to get your opinion, is how do you classify this example? 
Does it resemble following a friend or doing your own research? But why did you choose this one? What kind of research did you do? So if I were to ask you, okay, you want to go by the IIA prayer timetable, okay? Let's say. Okay, my follow-up question is why? Based on what? Did you do some sort of research, comparison? Okay, if you did, we can apply the hadith of Imam al-Sadiq that you tried to figure out Fajr. But if I didn't do any research, I just accepted this institution because because I like this institution, because it's closer to my house, because uh, you know I'm more comfortable with the management, with the board, with the Imam, whatever it is. I pray there all the time. So I pray there all the time. So why did you take this prayer timetable to be more accurate than others? What's your reasoning? Did you do some research in the process or no? If you actually did research, you maybe tried to figure out what you know, um, Tahran University, what their criteria is, what the Ja'faris in Pakistan, what their criteria is. You actually went on NASA's website, you looked at Twilight and Dawn, and you did some research, whatever it is. And then you're like, you know what, this, this is the most accurate one. Yes, we could argue that you did your own research, so if it's proven later that it was wrong, no qada on you. But what we're trying to figure out is this example of going on the prayer timetable, under which category does it fall? Making that determination is it's critical, has a big consequence. What, what do you say? What do you think this falls under? <laughs> following a friend or doing research? No, following, a following a friend. So, if, so if, if it follows under the category of following a friend, according to many scholars, you have to do the qala. <laughs> if it's proven that it's wrong, if it's proven, you have yaqeen. Yeah. If it's just a doubt or even a van, if someone comes and you know, brings you some calculations, you're like, okay, I, I kind of see a point there, but it's a 70%. It's, forget it, don't pay attention to that. We're talking about yaqeen, and it's proven to you 100% that this was wrong. In that case, scholars say you have to do the qada, but remember, no kafara, you did not commit a sin, so just do the qada of that day. Yes. So here's an example. It happened in Mumbai. Um, we like all the institutions. We have a timetable there too. So the institution there had a timetable, and it was published for ten consecutive years. And now after ten years, they, they discovered it was wrong. It was wrong. So the people actually had a problem over there. So my advice to myself and to everyone is when there are multiple prayer timetables, my advice is at least do some research. Go and try to figure out what kind of systems of calculations are. Try to see the twilight and whatever the dawn that NASA designates. Maybe one day if it's clear, go out of the city to like a darker area. Try to see Fajr for yourself. To see it's consistent with which uh, prayer timetable. Get away from like the city light. Go to a nearby area. And, and try to figure out Fajr for yourself. My advice is do some research. Some research, even if it's minimal. So at least the hadith of the Imam can apply to you. That, okay, you did some research. If it was discovered that was wrong, no consequences, no qada. You'll save yourselves a lot of headache in the future if one day, if one day you discover that this was wrong.